Hello and welcome to Old Expo, right? The group stages for Euro 2020 are over. Football was coming home, then it wasn't, then it kind of was again. At the minute, who knows? But the groups are over. The second round draw is complete. It'll be kicking off this afternoon with Wales versus Denmark. And before that game kicks off, I think now is a good time to review my group stage predictions. Unsurprisingly, they weren't great to be honest with you. We'll have a little run through them. And before we finish off today's video, I'm going to give you new predictions for the second round because clearly I didn't get any of the second round games right. I did get a lot wrong, but I got a fair few right as well. But I'm feeling a lot more confident this time around. And I'll tell you for why. Courtesy of my good friend Alfie Potama, look what came in the post. Football Content Awards 2020 Gold Award, HITC YouTube. I was there. I mean, we're still, it's still the same company. So I'm just going to, you know, credibility. You know, you can say what you like now. Gold award. I mean, what's better than gold? That was the top prize. Award winning. So I'm just going to pop this over here just so it's, you know, you can still see it. Gold award. So remember that. But don't remember it too much when we do these predictions. Right, let's go for it. Group A. I'm interested to see Italy. Mancini, great manager. Suave looking bloke. It's going to be a competitive group this one, I think, but Italy should have enough to come top. To be fair, I got that spot on. Mancini's a top manager and a man who knows his way around a top suit. I mean, look at these, man. Those are things of beauty. I've got weddings coming up in the next 12 months. I'm going to get myself one of them. Even with the Italy patch on it, I'll be the belle of the bloody ball. But it turns out it wasn't really that difficult for Italy. I had them to come top and that is exactly what they've done. But they did it with relative ease. Three wins out of three, three clean sheets. Italy, at the minute, probably one of the favourites for the entire tournament. They're on the tough side of the draw, but Italy are very, very exciting. The solid at the back. They've got the bouncers at the back with Benucci and Chiellini. Sorry, lads, you're not getting it tonight. Not with those trainers. And then they've got exciting players in the forward lines. They've got They've got a great squad. I mean, even Salvatore Sirigu got a couple of minutes against the Welsh. Everything is coming up roses for the Italians. And we are off to a hot start. One out of one predictions correct. This is where things start to go awry. And unfortunately for the Welsh, I think they will come rock bottom. So we're going to leave that as it is. Italy and Switzerland going through. And Turkey with the potential to go through as one of the best placed third teams. I mean, I literally couldn't have got that in a worse order. The Welsh out of nowhere coming second in Group A. I must apologise to everyone from Wales. I, I did not see this coming at all. And to be honest, I haven't actually seen it. I've somehow made a habit of being able to miss every Wales game. I missed the first one against Switzerland. I was putting a patio down. I missed the one against Turkey. I went to see my mate's new house. And then by the time I got me arse on the set eight to watch Wales versus Italy, the game was basically over because Ethan Ampadu had been sent off and Italy were winning 1-0. On the plus side, my new patio is looking absolutely banging. If you're after a patio yourselves, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are, let me know in the comments below. We'll talk a price. But more importantly, I did get rest of Group A absolutely, totally wrong. I mean, even Turkey, I still had them going through in third place. They were not the dark horses at all. They remind me of the horses that I used to bet on at Cheltenham where I won absolutely nothing. So after one group, we've got a somewhat poor total of one out of four on a Group B. And that is where things start to heat up. Group B, I got absolutely spot on. Belgium, Denmark, Finland and Russia. All in perfect order. Come on. It's coming home, lads. The predictions are back on track. I mean, I'm quite impressed that I got Finland to come third bang on ahead of Russia, but Finland's win at the tournament did kill me in less than savoury circumstances. Obviously, the three points they picked up came against Denmark in the first their first game, and that was the day where Christian Eriksen collapsed on the pitch. Obviously, the game was postponed. Eriksen was rushed to hospital. The game restarted a few hours later, and Finland went on to win 1-0. But, I mean, those Danish players were not ready to play a game of football. I mean, they just nearly watched their teammate die on the pitch. Fortunately, things are looking better for Eriksen. He's been released from hospital. He's recovering. Hopefully, hopefully things are going to be okay for him. It was such a terrifying, terrifying thing. But I think from that moment on, everyone's kind of rooting for Denmark now as their second team. And to be honest, with the way the draw is, they've got a great chance of going quite far in this tournament. As for Russia... They were really old and really crap. On to Group C. They're going to be a fun team to watch, I'd like to think. 
and they should be able to make it through this group in top spot. Another one, bang on, Netherlands top spot, three wins out of three, and they have been fun to watch. The Dutch are, you know what it is, the Dutch aren't half bad. There were a lot of question marks after the first game where they nearly threw away the lead against Ukraine, but they rallied back and they've been great. They've been a breath of fresh air. Obviously, they're not playing 4-3-3 like they normally do, but the likes of Wijnaldum's playing incredibly. I mean, this is the Wijnaldum that I used to watch at Newcastle. He used to score most weeks when we played at St. James's Park. When he went to Liverpool, he was playing in a more reduced role. He was kind of the link between defence and midfield. He would basically just give the ball to the better players. For the Dutch, though, he's one of the biggest attacking outlets. Him and alongside Memphis Depay looking really good. The wing-backs are getting forward. Denzel Dumfries, best name at the tournament. He's got himself a couple of goals. And the Dutch are looking pretty damn good. So that's one prediction we've got right here. The rest of the group was quite, quite bad. The rest of the group is a little bit of a conundrum. Christ, you can say that again. They just didn't look like they had goals in the team. So Group C, Netherlands, top spot, Ukraine second, North Macedonia third, and Austria rock bottom. Well, that was pretty appalling. Turned out Austria did have a few goals in them. In fact, they scored four, and somehow they have came second to make it into the second round. I, d I don't know how Austria have done it. I mean, God, they're such a drab watch. The only exciting thing that happened for them during the whole tournament was when Mark Ornatovic was booting off after scoring against North Macedonia. I've got to, you know, I think we should applaud North Macedonia. You know, the lowest ranked team at the entire tournament, they snuck through the back door via the Nations League and they've more than held their own. Yes, they've came bottom with no points, but their games have been entertaining. They've had a goal. Goran Pandev up front, brilliant at the age of 71. North Macedonia, you've done yourselves proud. Well done. But unfortunately, you didn't come bloody third to get me a prediction right. I got the rest of this group so, so wrong. So at the halfway stage, we've got half marks. Six out of 12. Not bad, but let's move on to Group D where things just get oh so worse. And that'll put them top spot. I think England and Scotland, I can see that being a draw, you know. I was right. England, Scotland was a draw. One of the most hyped games of the tournament, England versus Scotland. One of the biggest rivals in football history. On a Friday night at Wembley, Fans back in attendance. It was a perfect storm that ended nil nil. Christ, it was such a drab, drab watch as an Englishman. The Scots were loving it. You'd think they'd won the Euros with their nil nil draw, but fair play to Scotland. They did play very well, and I kind of do feel a little bit bad, bad for them finishing bottom of the group against the Czech Republic. They just couldn't finish the dinner. You could put a happy meal in front of Lyndon Dykes and you wouldn't be able to finish it. Against England, they played very well. And against Croatia, Luka Modric, man, he just rolled back the years as if it was Gail Platt in a glory days of curry and put on an absolute clinic in the midfield. And Croatia won 3-1 to put them through in second place. Czech Republic, quite a surprise for me. I, I mean, I think a lot of people probably had them completely flopping. At one point, it looked like they could have finished top of the group. That goal from Patrick Schick against Scotland, an absolute thing of beauty. And some of the memes of David Marshall just running back to his net desperately. Absolutely glorious. It's made the whole tournament worth it. But I had England come in second. They've came first. And the three lines have had a lot of criticism for their first three games at Euro 2020. Gareth Southgate's been hammered for his team selection. The performances haven't been, you know... They haven't been the most entertaining things, but let's put a positive spin on this, okay? The first game against Croatia, a 1-0 win against the 2018 World Cup finalists. Yes, it wasn't a vintage England performance, but it was a professional job. Well done. They got the goal. They held on. To be honest, Croatia didn't really put what under that much pressure. The Scotland game was massively disappointing, you know, but didn't really lay a glove on them. But to be honest, Scotland played very well, and credit to them. The Czech Republic game, again... We could have probably scored a few more goals. I mean, Czech Republic posed a bigger threat than Croatia did in the opening game. But England have made it through seven points. They haven't conceded a goal. Surely, surely there's got to be more to come from this England team. If they can get past Germany, they have got an incredible chance of going the distance. If, if they can get past Germany, God. If we can get past Germany. Oh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. England... It's going okay, but for predictions, it's going quite badly. Let's move on to Group E because I'll sorry, but it, it's getting worse before it gets better. I've got Spain down in third. Spain just aren't the force they once were. When you look at that squad, it's just 
I mean, I think we can all agree, Spain are not the force they once were. And they've shown that in the first three games. Against Sweden and against Poland, they were just so drab, man. Passing it sideways, it wasn't the ticky tacker style that you've seen in years gone by. Before, they used to be able to play through the lines, the players creating angles, and they would just create so many chances. Whereas now, they kind of just keep the ball for the sake of it and then just high crosses into the box to Alvaro Morata. I mean, that's not going to work for you. And then you've got Danny Murphy on commentary. For some reason, on commentary, every Spain game, clamouring for a Dharma Triuri to play. Oh, how is the Dharma Triuri in the Spain squad? That doesn't matter because I got this. I got this group absolutely appallingly wrong, and they were rubbish. Lewandowski didn't even score a single goal. But I'm back in them to be better in in 2021. I'm putting Poland top and Sweden second. Poland top of the group. What was I thinking? They've came fourth. How are Poland so, so bad at major tournaments? Yes, you could argue they're a bit of a one-man team with Robert Lewandowski, but it's not like the other 10 players are nobodies. It's not like Toby Darren's playing in goal in the public, who's still pissed from the night before. They've got elite players. Wojciech Szczesny, Juventus goalkeeper. Zielinski's decent. You know, these are decent footballers. And yet again, they have failed to deliver on the grand stage. But, I mean, at least Robert Lewandowski did score some goals this time. I mean, at the 2018 World Cup, You'd think he wasn't even there, at least at the Euros he scored three, but it wasn't enough for Poland to even make it out of the group stages. I think this group was my worst prediction of the lot, which is, to be honest, is, is saying quite a lot. But let's move on to the final group, Group F, where I got things absolutely spot on, but Christ only just. Hungry man. Let's have a little look back at what I said about Hungary. It's the group of death. You feel sorry for Hungary. They're going to get their asses absolutely handed to them. I mean, imagine if Hungary get a point. Christ, if you're Hungarian, I'd probably just put something else and maybe watch the chase, put a film on or something. Christ, that'd be better than this. Despite all the slander that came from me, everyone else on YouTube, every pundit, every man in the street, even probably the Hungarians, Hungary nearly made it through. They were so, so good. They took the game to every team in that group. Against Portugal, yes, the, the scoreline flattered Portugal. Against France, they were winning. The only reason they didn't win was because of a long route one ball that you would see in kids football. And against Germany, so, so close to getting the result they deserved. Yet still, for all the incredible performances, Hungary have still came rock bottom of Group F. But at least it's got as a prediction, right? And I got this group absolutely spot on. Only just though, only just. So there we have it. Those were my group stage predictions. I got 10 out of 24 positions right, which is, um, I mean, it's not great. It's less than half. I got about 41%, I think. So if it was a university degree, I, I would have passed, but it was only a third, which isn't great. But at least I got more right than this Muppet. And I was only one behind Alfie too, and apparently he knows everything about football. In terms of teams going through the second round, I was a little bit better. I got 13 out of the 16 teams correct. I had Poland, Turkey and Scotland going through. That, that didn't happen. But in terms of second round ties, I didn't predict a single one right. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into the UEFA predictor. I've got the second round knockout fixtures lined up. And what we're going to do is fresh predictions for the rest of the tournament. Now things are a little bit more set. We know who's playing who. We know who could be meeting who in the final. Let's redo the knockout round predictions. Let's go. And as if by magic, here we are on the UEFA predictor. I mean, we've, we've changed the setup slightly. As you can see, it's a, it's a grim day up north, but we're here to talk about the uh, the knockout stages of the Euros, and let's have a look who we've got. Belgium versus Portugal, Italy versus Austria, France versus Switzerland, Croatia, Spain, Sweden, Ukraine, England, Germany, the Dutch versus the Czech Republic, and Wales versus Denmark. Obviously, we'll go from the top, just because that's easier. Belgium first versus Portugal, two favorites for the tournament. Um, to be honest, I'm gonna go with Belgium. Belgium are gonna go, I'm gonna say they're gonna go deep into the tournament. I'm not quite sure if they are. I think they've got enough to get past Portugal. Yes, Portugal have been good, but I think Belgium just got a bit of nous about them. I think they'll be able to get past them. Italy versus Austria, I mean, Christ, if Italy don't make it through, I swear to God, Italy have got to make it through at the quarterfinals. France, Switzerland again, it's got to be France. A good draw for the world champions. They should 
be able to get past Switzerland with relative ease. Croatia versus Spain is an interesting one. Neither team's really, really impressed. So I, I don't really know who to go for. Oh, before I was thinking Croatia, but now it's come down to it. I might, I might go Spain. Neither teams look great. But Spain haven't actually lost the game yet. Let's go Spain. Let's, let's do it. Somehow they're going to make it to the quarterfinals. Sweden, Ukraine, an interesting one. I mean, if you look at some of the ties, the fact you've got Belgium versus Portugal and England versus Germany, yet somehow Sweden are getting to play Ukraine. I mean, two teams that, with all due respect, no one really thought they would go far in this tournament, but they've actually got a great chance. In that game, I mean... Sweden or Ukraine? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for Ukraine. Andrei Yarmolenko would have been one in the top corner late on. But who will they put? England, Germany, I'm going to come back to. I'll make that the last one I do. The Dutch versus the Czech Republic. Got to be the Dutch. A nice draw for them. Wales versus Denmark. Sorry, Wales fans, but I, I, th I think Denmark are going to have enough to get past you. And England versus Germany. If England can beat Germany, they have got such a good chance of making it to the final. They're on the good side of the draw, just like they were at the 2018 World Cup. But can they beat Germany? Yes, yes they can. Football is coming home. We can do it. Surely, surely we can beat Germany. I mean, obviously it's not a gimme. You know, this is a, a good German team. They're not, obviously not great in comparison to recent years, but I mean, neither are we. On the night though, I'm going to go for it. Ruling with my heart over my head, and I'm gonna go for England. On the quarterfinals, Belgium versus Italy. There's something about Italy. I just I think they can do it. I think they can go all the way to the semi-finals. Yes, this is you know still the golden generation of Belgium, but Italy good going forward and solid at the back. They've got the perfect combination of what you want for a team in a major tournament. And I, th I think Mancini's men. I've got a real shot of being winners here. So I'm going to have them beating Belgium in the quarterfinals. France versus Spain. No questions asked. Got to be France beating Spain. Spain will be lucky to make the quarterfinals. And by that time in the tournament, France should be really starting to come into their own. Ukraine versus England. It's a banana skin for England, but one I think they can get past. I think England are going to make back-to-back -back semi-finals at major tournaments. But who will they play in the semi-finals? The Netherlands or Denmark? Will we see a repeat of 1992? Can Denmark go all the way? Or will it be the Dutch? I, I, I think it'll be the Dutch to make it at the semi-finals. I don't think the Dutch will win the whole tournament. But I think against the teams who are, you know, slightly worse than them, I think they've got enough to get beaten. Especially with the amount of attack and talent they've got. Even in reserve, the likes of Daniel Malen. He's looked good when he's came on. I think the Dutch can make it at the semi-finals. So our semi-final draw is Italy versus France and England versus the Netherlands. Italy versus France, a repeat of the 2006 World Cup final. I think in my original predictions I had this as my semi-final on this side of the draw. And still, I'm gonna go with France. I need to sneeze. Oh, sorry about that. Right, sorry, I'm gonna go with France. France to make it into the final. Three consecutive major finals for France. Can they make it back to back? major trophies but who will they meet in the final England or Netherlands oh why am I being so silly oh yes England they're gonna do it they're gonna make it to the final oh, why have I done this why have I predicted England to make it to the Euros final I mean oh. they might not even make it past Germany yet I've predicted them to get the final this is gonna come and bite me back on my English backside I can tell you that for now but we've done it France versus England in the final. But to be honest, this is where the dream will die for England. There is no chance England can beat this French side. I mean, the absolute panic across the nation when it looked like England could have been playing France in the second round. Somehow, I've got them playing each other in the final and even my heart isn't going to overrule my head yet. France, I'm still going with France to win the entire thing. But let me know your predictions down in the comments below. We will leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I've just said that. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. And until next time, we will see you around.